Selectman's meeting, then we're going to have the Bolton Annual Town Meeting. It's now seven o'clock, and I'm going to read the call. Town of Bolton call of annual town meeting. The legal voters of the town of Bolton are hereby warned and notified to meet at the annual town meeting at the town hall, 222 Bolton Center Road on Tuesday, May 3, 2022 at seven o'clock p.m. for the following purposes. One, to hear the annual reports from each town commission, board, agency, and office. Two, to authorize the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer of the Town of Bolton, when the annual budget is approved, to borrow on specific counts or otherwise, set sums of money from time to time, and at set time or times as may be necessary to meet the expenses and obligations of said Town of Bolton for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 in an amount not exceeding the appropriations authorized herein. Number three, to consider and act upon the five-year capital improvement plan as presented by the Board of Selectmen in the annual budget document. Dated at Bolton, Connecticut, this 22nd day of April, 2022. It's signed by our Board of Selectmen, Pamela Sawyer, Robert Mora, Michael Aramita, Adam Keller, and Robert DePietro Jr. I also read into the record the return of notice um, signed by our administrative officer, Jim Rupert, <clears throat> who states, I hereby certify that on April 27, 2022, I left a duplicate of the foregoing and attached warning and notice of the annual town meeting of the town of Bolton with Elizabeth C. Waters, its town clerk. I further certify that I have caused a copy of said warning and notice to be published in the Hartford Current, a newspaper having a circulation in said town of Bolton. I further certify that on April 27, 2022, I set upon the signposts within the limits of said town and all other places designated by the town, a written copy of said warning and notice signed by the Board of Selectmen. I further certify that all of the above acts were done by me at least five days before the holding of said meeting on May 3, 2022. Dated at Bolton, Connecticut, this 28th day of April, 2022, again signed by James M. Rupert, Administrative Office, and Elizabeth Waters, Town Clerk, certified the foregoing notice and return of notice were duly recorded in its records. So as noted above, um, we have before us today um, three items um, that will be taken up. Um, the first is to hear annual reports from each town commission, board, agency, and office. Do I have a motion in that regard? Pam Sawyer? Mr. Moderator, I move that the annual reports for each board and commission agency and office be accepted as printed in the annual report of the town of Bolton for the year ending June 30th, 2021, as published by the Board of Finance and filed with the town clerk. Is there a second to that motion? Mr. Mayor, Mita seconds. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing no hands, hearing none. All in favor of that motion passing signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, the first motion passes. Item number two, resolved that the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer of the Town of Bolton. Mr. Chairman. Sir. Um, since we have uh, people uh, online voting, it seems that you need to count their vote. No. Actually, uh, you can't vote online. They can participate online. They have oh, to actually be vote. here to vote. Okay. okay. Item number two, resolved that the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer. Mr. Chairman, what's your legal authority for that? Um, because the notice didn't allow for a uh, video voting, you know, ask people to be present here today. That's what the call states. Item number two, resolved that the Board of Selectmen and the Treasurer of the Town of Bolton be authorized to borrow on specific accounts or otherwise such sums of money from time to time and at such times as may be necessary to meet the expenses and obligations of said Town of Bolton for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 in amount not exceeding the appropriations authorized herein. Mr. Is there a motion? I move. Ms. Sawyer moves. Is there a second? All right, Bob Moore seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none and hearing none, all in favor of the motion passing signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes carry the motion passes. Item number three, resolve that the five-year capital improvement plans be accepted as presented by the Board of Selectmen and Board of Education in the annual budget document. Is there a motion to that effect? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Moderator. Sir, is there a second? 
Mr. Armida, is there any discussion? There is, perhaps. Okay. Thank you. I think this proposal, uh, this capital plan contains some items that are ill-advised, most specifically the installation of a temporary office building uh, next to this building, between this building and the Congregational Church. I personally will be voting against this proposal with the recommendation that it be sent back to the Board of Selectmen for a more thorough analysis of the needs and the alternatives for both meeting space and office space. And let the record reflect that was Ms. Purov who just voted. Is there any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Sure. Please just identify yourself for the record. Uh, Richard Tuggell, um, 233 Bolton Center Road. Uh, I concur uh, with, with the gentle lady um, who just spoke. Uh, this town went to great lengths to establish a national um, uh, neighborhood of uh, historic uh, district here. Um, it doesn't have the force of law in terms of regulating what can be built, but the issue is very clear that the town wants us to keep the center of town and the small town green, and preferably also the large town green, which is not include, included uh, as um, as colonial in its um, its uh, nature. We have several historic homes that face the screen. Establishing a temporary office space uh, here uh, would destroy that concept, fly in the face of that, and this. I would remind you that this is a town-led initiative that we homeowners uh, reluctantly considered and decided to join into. Uh, furthermore, there are two locations just to the left of us over here, the Pistrito House backyard and the Pistrito House side yard to the north of the house itself, which would be ideal uh, uh, sites for the um, for such a, uh, a temporary office uh, uh, structure, uh, I'm reminded of um, Henry Kissinger and a few other um, well-known uh, government officials who have said this from time and time uh, to time. And what they like to say is that there is absolutely nothing more permanent than a temporary. Solution. Okay. Uh, I know that if you put it over by the Pistrito House, that um, it will cost a little bit more. But I would remind the board that at least two of the previous boards of selectmen, uh, I mean, two members of the previous board of selectmen, uh, were all in favor of spending three hundred and forty or three hundred and sixty thousand dollars to buy the bar house. Okay. So spending an extra twenty or twenty-five thousand uh, to run utilities and sidewalk uh, uh, facilities over to the new temporary uh, trailer for the office space seems to me uh, would be uh, money well worth spent, and it would uh, keep the neighborhood and the uh, district uh, consistent in its original intent. So I will be voting against this. Um, and noting that the governor still has in force a uh, reduced uh, advance notice for these types of uh, meetings. It's not five days, it's 48 hours. Um, that you can come back to us very expeditiously with that item removed. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Um, okay, please. Yes, Ross Lally, 41 Notch Road. I'll save some time. I just will state that I will be voting no for the reasons that the two other people have already said. I just think this is a beautiful historic town green and that this is an inappropriate solution. And I think the Board of Selectmen need to put their thinking caps on, do a little bit more homework, and come up with a solution that, you know, meets the uh, Address the historic nature of our town green. 
And um, I'm not challenging the need for you know some storage space and meeting areas for the town staff because as a deputy registrar of voters, I work in that building down there. It is a disaster. It is the ceiling falling out. So I'm not challenging the need. I'm challenging the proposed solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Anyone else wish to speak? Please. Paul Myers, Seven Country Club. Um, I, I, I also do not challenge the need. I voted when we had it up to the top of the issues in the past for um, expanding the book of the town hall. Um, I have more concerns around the fact that, um, in my opinion, there was very little information that was given about this. Um, no, I think most people would agree that this was a need for town hall. But what I, I question is the fact that we haven't heard any more about expanding the town hall for at least 10 years. And and why has there not been more given to the thought of expanding the town hall in a in a more thoughtful and planned manner? Um, I also have questions around was any thought given to the idea of um, taking some space from the school? And maybe borrowing the classroom, we have lowest, lowest, the lowest enrollment we've had, and I can't even remember how long. Um, if we borrow the classroom and keep some cubicles in there, that would be temporary and not as un unsightly as a modular might be. Um, or even now that COVID has hit us, so many people work from home, do we not make use of a few people from home? And then coming to town hall if meeting spaces, as it is right now, not in the same building as the current hall workers now. So. Just the things that I'd rather do than have the modular, but I absolutely agree that we need the space. But I would rather um, wait and see if we can hold out until a time when our debt is low enough that can, we can really put forth more time and effort to expanding the town hall as it needs to be done rather than putting up a modular. Mark, we have a hand up online. Yeah, I've got a couple here too, but thank you, Mr. Miramino. Okay. Yeah, uh, to speak to Paula's question to begin with, we have done some research. The uh, students from UConn uh, that we had have worked on some plans, things like that. So we are moving forward on something that would be a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Uh, as at least for myself, and I know from, from other members of the board, we have uh, we haven't been. Uh, I met with Dick. We went to the uh, school over next door. The the idea of not putting it directly next to the side of town hall, that's the most convenient, the easiest, and the cheapest place to put it, but it doesn't necessarily have to go there. We are looking at the area behind the Pistrito House. It was up to me. I'd tear the Pistrito House right down and put it there, but that's another historic building. It's, it's just, it's going to fall down on this one of these things. The, uh, another suggestion that I made, put it behind town hall where it wouldn't be seen at all. Run it the length of town hall behind, and then there's no problem because it's hidden from everybody. So there, this is not falling on deaf ears. The Board of Selectmen is looking into other options of where we would put it. So, uh, you know, I would, I would prefer if you didn't take it out of the five-year plan and let us examine the other solutions but you know we are trying to not put it where it will be visible or it would be taken away from our historic town hall as, as if anybody knows me i was one with Gwen who wanted to have the old school our town office building and leave the historic town hall as a historic town hall unfortunately the building is beyond repair so that that bothered me because i was hoping to do that so uh like I said, it's not on deaf ears. We hear what people are saying. We understand and we feel for the people that want to keep it this way, because I would like to too. But we have to have something, and it's got to be in close proximity to the town to make efficient work. And there is space on the other two sides. Realize it'll be more expensive, yes, but we could do it. Street. Jonathan Street, 87 Bolton Center Road. I think it would be a bad mistake to put a temporary structure offices anywhere up here at the center. Um, I believe that so firmly. Um, 
and I can't overstate, I think it would be a complete travesty. And to put it behind the building, it wouldn't avoid my eyesight when I was anywhere adjacent to, to this property. Um, I think it's, I just think it's a terrible idea. And I thank you for your time. Anyone else from the audience before I go virtual? Yes, Gwen. I'm Gwen Marion. I'm uh, speaking on behalf of the Bolton Congregational Church. The, as you can probably guess, the church is adamantly opposed to shoehorning a modular building between these two historic buildings. We have three historic buildings that stand shoulder to shoulder in harmony here. The former Castrito House built in 1770. This building built in 1915. That church built in 1848. And these, when you... We are lucky to have a historic town green with no major highway running through it. It's a beautiful property. We look out onto a historic farm. And as uh, Mr. Tuthill uh, mentioned, uh, this whole area is on the National Register of Historic Places. There's some very good language that comes right out of that application. The Bolton, historic, the Bolton Green Historic District is significant historically and architecturally because it's a well-preserved open space dating from early in the 18th century, surrounded by buildings and agricultural land associated with the community's early history and its civic development into the late 20th century. The green is intact as open space maintained for public use while its neighboring buildings are good examples of several historic architectural styles. Also, the green was and is the civic, religious, and social core of the town providing a classic example of the disposition of New England village facilities. That's right from the historic uh, uh, register. And also our plan of conservation and development, which all of the community participated in in 2015, and our planning and zoning commission adopted this plan, firmly states in a number of places that this historic green should be left as a green. Um, one of the main uh, goals of the plan of conservation and development was to uh, preserve the community character and I quote, by keeping a traditional colonial era village center in Bolton Center. Um, also, 80% of those polled by telephone <clears throat> strongly agreed with the statement, keep the historical character of the town center area. And another quote from the plan, Bolton should <laughs> seek to prevent changes that would negatively affect and continue to undertake programs and projects that enhance community character. So I urge the Board of Selectmen to respect the National Register of Historic Places, how special an asset we have here, and respect the vision that was adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission in 2015 with input from the community. And I will also vote against the capital plan, and I will vote against any kind of an effort to move forward with this modular building in this location. Mr. Moore. <clears throat> Thank you. And I appreciate everyone's comment here today because um, since our, the last uh, Board of Finance meeting, the topic has come forward. And as Mike said, we are not a board of deaf ears. We have listened to what, uh, what has been presented to us. And one of the things, there's a couple of issues. One, um, placing it here, there, or there, or anywhere else, um, the placement, it, we, it does not have to be here. It does not have to be there, but it has to be somewhere. We cannot go forward as we've had for year after year after year with hopefully we can ha have a solution. One of the solutions that we cannot afford is build a new town office building. There's no way we can afford it. There's no way we can afford it now. The only time we, we have a chance to do this is when we, when we, re, we um, retire significant debt. That's 2028 in that time period. So you're looking six years out. And then, so you can plan for that, have a plan forward, get finance passed, but like anything else, this is going to be a building that's not inexpensive, whether it's $2 million, $3 million, four, whatever it is, that has to, again, go before the tax. And for those of you who've been in town for a long time, any major project that's going forward, 
um, depends on the economic circumstances of the time. If the town can afford it, it, it may go forward. If the town can't, I'll guarantee you, whether I'm here or not, it won't go forward. So in between, we have to come up with a solution that will carry us forward. In this temporary, if you will, quote, as, as the gentleman back here said about temporary is, you know, the definition of that can be whatever you want. But I, in, in my philosophy, it's there until we, we, we can replace it with a building. So here. it behooves us to come up with a better solution of where we put it than here. But we do need to have this as a permanent solution. We can't go forward this way. The school has space, but that space is going to be utilized by the Y that is moving from Knox Road into the school system. The Knox Road space with, with uh, that's the, the portion behind the senior center. That space will become our meeting space that we're going to lose from Knox Road. We, we lose at least two meeting rooms there. We have to, where are we going to go? We don't have any, we have no alternatives. Those are great alternatives. It, the retrofit them, we could have them ready in, in, in a, a few months for that space. So this is the solution that we we spent some serious time looking at it cost-wise. And it's a cost-effective way to carry us to three, four, five, six, seven years. And if we don't do this, we're back to even if we were to make an agreement with the church, um, I, I mean, I'm not, a, obviously, obviously I'm not a parishioner with, with, with our church next door, but can we all make a commitment that you won't need that space in the next seven, eight years or five years? Yes, you can for the next two years or three years, I'm sure you can. But we, we have been good neighbors. I mean, it's certainly all the time that I've been on this board and we try to be good neighbors. We should continue to be good neighbors. And in doing that, I think we all have to think about putting some offices there. If we could do it, it's a very short temporary solution for both of us. And we can't have it. I mean, again, we're, we, we, we're putting ourselves back in the old rut, a one or two year solution. We have to have something that's, that gives us the option that if the town does not vote for additional office space building, we have we, we can continue operating as it is. As it looks now, we have to move some of the offices back so you all can fit in here. This is what we operate on a daily basis. And this is no way for things to operate. You know, and we have looked at numerous solutions or attempted solutions. None of them were cost effective. <laughs> This is the only cost effective thing that'll carry us through five, four, five, six years. Thank you. Further comments from the house. Mr. Creed. Question, if I may. Did Bob Laura have a guesstimate of a cost of the new structure when it might be built? Did you say two million something? I'd say anywhere between two and four million. Thank you. I just it, that's that's a low estimate, but <laughs> yeah. not for the temporary structure. No, 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 no. Well, the temporary, is, no, no, no. You, how much is the temporary? Two hundred eighty-six. Um, I, I don't remember. I think it's around one hundred and seventy. Yeah, one hundred eighty-six. Well, and at the end of three years, we own it. And we own the cell. It's a lease purchase. Yeah. So it's not something we with everything. It's not like a fire engine. You, you don't get nothing for it. No, no, <laughs> we can sell that. <laughs> Not only can sell it, it can be repurposed for the other 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 uses for schools, for for storage, whatever. Further discussion from the room, ma'am. Mr. Parker, I live up on Birch Mountain Road and I've been here for 50 years. I did not want to see any changes that come about. The option that the church had offered that uh, you could utilize it if you do your own budgets at home, if you need more money, okay. You say only maybe three years that you would utilize that space. That's three years of saving, the way I see it as a town, to put towards our five year plan. Um, I think it's wonderful that the, the church would like to offer this space for us. It looks like it could be utilized very well. It has the handicapped um, bathrooms, it has a wonderful room that's bigger than this to accommodate all the people. 
there's no reason why it shouldn't be utilized. You would help. I mean, my God, maybe if this temporary building costs sixty nine thousand a year or so, mm -hmm. you could pay the church thirty thousand. You're that much more a hit, and it probably could be something that could be worked out. But I think we're all through the same. We love this town. We don't want to see a change, and there must be some way that we can make some accommodations. Mm -hmm. Further comments. Um, Jenny Wickersham and I live at Fort Newark Links, and I too have been here for 51 years. And I know I'm not native, but I do have a feeling for this town. And I urge people to vote this capital budget down so that you don't have the right to continue to go on to this permanent temporary building. You may come back in 48 hours with a change if that works. But if we approve that capital expenditure tonight, that means you can go forward with this temporary building right here without anybody, anything to say about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Further comments? Sure. I'm good to be at about 102 School Road. I, I agree. I think we do a lot of Band-Aid action uh, here in town and they tend to all of a sudden see a new item on the budget or um, whether it's a fire truck or a building or a fire truck. Um, and I agree about the temporary, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of temporary classrooms that became permanent. I see a lot of Temporary tarps on roofs that become permanent. Um, I think that it's best that we plug it to have a permanent place for this. Now, I have, it seems to me that we had looked at at one time on Notch Road to the bill offices of the town hall. And uh, that was a nice big building, wasn't it? And um, uh, I don't know how it, that kind of thinking changed. But uh, again, when we when we go to a temporary solution, we're spending money that we could be putting towards the permanent solution. And so when we get to that place three years down the road where we have to do the permanent solution, what else are we going to do? Construct for the public works. Building fire, from, you know, what, what else will we be looking at? Because this will is what keeps the temporary thing in there, first of all. And second of all, it doesn't allow us to feel comfortable when we budget something on top of that. And then we have to, then we feel like we were, you know, we were brought down a road that brought us to two big items we have to pay for. Um, so, that's the way I feel about it. Oh. Sorry, one more question. Um, is the I heard some talk about there being an expansion to the firehouse too. Is that included in the capital budget? No, no. no. And, and why not? Because for one thing, it's the only. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to take my breath. Uh, I hit snooze, so it's going to do it again. Uh, <laughs> I'll remind you. <laughs> the the only thing the only thing that's in our capital plan is a study and uh, money to do uh, cost analysis <laughs> and all of that for that. It's twenty five thousand, is it, Jim? I think it, thirty five. Thirty five is in there. Did you come back to town town meeting for that? Too? No. Well, that's, not for the twenty five, but if you decided to. If, do if we oh, yeah. if the fire department if it's decided that they should go forward. It'll go to voters for the, the town will vote on it because it'll have to be bonded. So my my concern is that like we always have something where we say we can't afford the town hall because that costs five million. So instead we'll spend a million here and a million there and a million there, and then we don't we have so much debt we can't then pay for the five million. And we've been doing this for 20 years. I'd rather I'd rather hold off on everything else that's not like ready to whatever and put the money towards doing something for town hall that's more permanent <coughs> because we absolutely need to do something for town hall and and i'm fully supportive of doing some, something for town hall i'm just not supportive of this particular <coughs> answer at this moment 
All right. Is there any further discussion? Oh, there is. Um, it's just like gentleman over there. We did investigate the Notch Road Center. It, it was my goal that that become town hall and this remain a historic area right here, as it is with no people working. Unfortunately, the study came back and basically told us that the only thing we can do to that building is tear it down. The, the, it is beyond repair. Unfortunately, I wanted to do things like put stucco on the outside. Turns out the brick is part of the structural member of the building. So that's all got to come off. The roof has got to come off completely. And when you, when you tear everything back to the roots, nobody knows what's under the building to, to build on again. And I, if I, if my memory is correct, the study said that we would, it cost us like $9 million to renovate it. And it wouldn't be a permanent building, wouldn't be a 100 or 50 year building. 25 years is what they said we'd get out of it for nine. And we could rebuild a structure big enough for what we need for about five. So whether we tear it down and eventually build a new building over there which would be our goal, or at least my goal, and you know, in the future have relocate the offices over there. We're just trying to get through the time. Yeah, at the very least, you're looking at a couple of three years before you'd even get a project done. And, and we can't go on as a town that way without the space that we have at the Notch Road Center. So this is a, an interim solution that we thought by, by you know purchasing this lease purchase building we could get rid of it and and recoup some of our funds and it, you know it it serves a purpose it's a well, temporary solution i know you think temporary solutions could be permanent and so do i i know how that works but it's not a temporary solution we we have a goal of a new office building it's in the future. It's just not in the next couple of years. Even if we started today, it wouldn't be in the next two or three years. So it, this is, you know, having something like this is all we can do. All right. Mr. Mr. Aramita, Jackie Steele, 21 Williams Road. Um, Mr. Aramita, you're talking about $5 million, million for building a building where Notch Road is. Does that include the cost of demolition of it? No. So that's going to be another bonding issue. Well, so if we, it's going to increase the cost even more. Right. But so even with those two items, it doesn't come close to the cost of repairing the building. It, I wanted to repair that building. And people who were on the board know that I wanted that building repaired and that to become our office building. And I was heartbroken when the engineer said, it's beyond repair. But you're talking short-term stay here for a temporary building so that in three to five years, we can start doing that. We're not gonna be out of that debt because you're gonna have the debt for destroying Nacho. And I completely understand. I used to have Girl Scout meetings in that building. I understand the, it's it, a it disaster. Will, it will but probably be one- moving things down one, the road. It will probably be one combined bond for the whole project, but you know it's it is what it is. The, the, you've seen the building, you know what it's like. And it should have been worked on ten years ago when it was first being talked about. Yeah. Ma'am, yeah. Yes, um, I'm Dorothy Paul. I live in town, but I'm a new person here. But I always loved living here, and I think what I love so much about here is the fact that this is such a nice small town. And this little center area with the old-fashioned the old church and the town hall and the, you know, the, where the state police are over there, I think all these little things kind of, and the green, it all makes for charming and sweet. And being an artist, that's very important to me. So I, I speak from a visual standpoint. I wouldn't change it. I would never put it. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, let me ask Paul before someone who hasn't spoken. Sir, you haven't spoken yet. Yeah, so I'm Alex Rivera, 11 Colin Rose, Bolton. I'm also a member of Portland. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, and we've gone back and forth with this. Like, I understand an engineer, one engineer, right, said we can't, we don't have a solution for In my experience, you get three. And one of the missions that we should tell the engineer or the students or whoever's working on this project, they get you kind of involved as well, is they, a solution is not to tear it down. So come up with a solution without tearing the building down. 
come up with that solution first. I understand we can, and if we can't do it, the engineer said we couldn't. From a person who, who had helped remodel homes, a person who lived in a 1950s cave, which has brick underneath, that may or may not need some help. I can, I, I, it's very difficult for me to believe that this building has to be torn down. So I vote against it. And I would say that figure out a solution to bring a commission together of subject matter experts to save that building and to save the historic uh, village charm of Bolton that we all love. That's all I have to say. Mr. Moore. This is the probably fourth go around on that building as far as preserving it. That last engineering study was the last engineering study. Previous two engineering studies, which included a complete set of plans to renovate that town hall, that building to a town hall at a cost of four and a half million dollars. It was brought before the voters of this town, which crashed just like a Soviet plane over Ukraine. It went down that fast because of the cost. It was studied again, again, engineering, cost, and they all said the same thing. It's more expensive to renovate it than there is to tear it down and build new. It's not one, it's not two, it's, it's three. Now, there's your three. If you're talking about the three, it's happened and it's come before the town. I, ha I hate to say it as much as Mike was uh, uh, wanted to preserve that building. I spent a good part of my time on this board coming out and a couple of the members who have served on this, on this board with me and how to keep that building going and how to preserve it and how to generate something so we could do it. And we, we, we've done everything from uh, a business center. We had uh, two schools, private schools in there. And obviously we've been there, but the cost is simply totally prohibitive. This town can't afford it. It's a money pit. It's, it's a, what's called a giant alligator. Whatever you put in, it's eaten up to get nothing back. And that's where we are. It's economically unfeasible to, to repair it. We're at that point. Whether we locate here, and it sounds like that's not going to happen, but uh, to another spot, we do have to come up again with a solution that goes beyond, I know Kathy, goes beyond three years. Even yeah, but three years from now, we can address the next phase. That's why we have five years. Well, plan. well, if I may, three years, you may start then with a developing a set of plans where you can figure out what you're going to do for a town hall. However, your debt service doesn't go down till 28. And you won't be able to bond. I mean, you're not going to be able to bond till then. So that means. No matter what, you're still going to be in this building for six, maybe seven years. If the town members, if the town citizens, if the town taxpayers say, okay, we'll approve the project that you bring forward. If they don't, we still have to, you still have to have a solution, a place to set up. We can do short term and have, when I'm retired again, and have the next group say, okay, you're stuck with it now. You come up with a solution. No, it's time for us to do a solution now that will carry us forward so we have a permanent building. All right, ma'am. Uh, what is wrong with Heritage Farm? Can you just renovate Heritage Farm that house there and have offices? I'm really not. Supposed to be answering questions, but I, I suspect um, she's proposing whether Heritage Farm might be a suitable spot for a town hall. Where? The house, house, the house in Heritage oh, no. Farm. That's where shape to me. <laughs> it, it's in very poor shape. Structurally, no. Yeah. It's, it, it, it wouldn't support the floor load. Mr. Viet? Thanks, Ronald. Uh, Tim Bayon again. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to circle back to the temporary, but I want to ask, we talked about the capital budget. You said there's going to be 
the study about the building for the fire department? No. Uh, there's, there's money in the budget to develop a cost analysis, what it would cost to add a bay onto the price. Can, can, can I just interrupt? We ought to probably stick with what's on the agenda tonight and the fire truck or an uh, right, enlargement well, that's really not. Capital, but I, what yeah. I want to say is that there was no foresight I think, with the fire truck because there was no discussion about Let's not do fire trucks tonight, okay? okay? But in terms of the building, can, we're thinking about here and then rebuilding that. I mean, the town owns a lot of land throughout the town. Can we not put that in a temporary location somewhere else? I understand that offices work in, in unison, mm -hmm. but do we know who's going to be in those offices? There are some departments that do not need to be next to each other. Ma'am. Um, hi, Leah Maroney, one from Susie River. Um, I just was thinking of one other possible location. Is there's a large blacktop area right next to the notch building that's by the playground that's not being used. I mean, it could probably fit the modular office that's right there. And I mean, that's already where the offices are. So anyone who's meeting over there is already used to being over there. Large. Thank you. Good Mr. Treat, did I see your hand? Yeah, but they, uh, my question was what other spots might this committee have looked at, um, if any? Ms. Sway, would you care to answer that? Briefly. <laughs> <laughs> my line. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. So we have taken a long look. This is not the first board to have taken a look and trying to sort this problem out. It's been prior boards as well. But we've come to the point where the building at Notch Road is about to be condemned because of its condition. It is no longer safe for people to be in as workers, or it's that close, that close to being not safe for the workers. And that's first and foremost my concern. We have the second issue, which is we have to have space for meeting space. It's not safe for people to have the boards and commissions, the scouts, the upcoming reval meetings that will have to be next year by law. And we have storage issues. We have the registrars and their storage needs. We have storage that we have for recreation over there, all the needs for the recreation department and all this the bits that they have to have. And we have um, storage for the finance department, which is essential and is by law. So we have those, those items, not just six offices. Okay, so having said that, going back to Mr. Treat's question, let's look at a couple of those spots. If you look at behind the Notch Road Municipal Center, you have the blacktop, you have that field, does anybody know that that's the veterans field? It is deeded and it is deeded for recreation. There's our condition that we cannot use. The second issue, you look over at Herrick Park, you look at Herrick Park. The deed for Herrick Park is also the same thing. It is deeded in the purchase to the, to the town as recreation. So that doesn't work. We're talking about office space, talking about government. So it's, the two are not the same. We look over at Indian Notch Park. I mean, we're going over, Alex, to your day. Right? <laughs> because there's the open field. And we've, we have looked and with a fine tooth comb. Uh, one of our selectmen has recommended, so I'm sorry, the same thing as the deed issue for, and the, the state money that came in that is for recreation. We have that. Thank you. So then you look at, um, are three to five office parks that we don't have in the town we have places to look at. We just don't have them. We are the community that you all love so much. I totally agree with you. But we are sitting on a condemned, almost condemned problem, and we have to act on that. So the safety of our people are first and foremost. Finding a solution that makes your government work well is our responsibility to offer to you. The third is try to find a way 
that solves the problem as we develop the permanent solution that you're all understanding that we, we have um, the ability to have a town hall that is functional for the next 70 to 100 years. So this old building over at Knoxville. One of the things we looked at when we tried to renovate it as a school was it was built on seven different levels. Didn't need code then. The basement only has six foot six foot high ceilings. It has many of the issues of an old building. It is not ADA compliant. At the time, we decided I was on the board of ed. At the time, and we went to build the extension on the elementary school, the center school over there, it's not called Golden Central School, because we felt that with the town support. Well, no, they're, no, they're still right, waiting for the, yeah, there's, there's a typical town meeting. Well, it's not a town meeting at all. Well, they're talking, yes, 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 yes. Excuse me. Excuse me, caller 649-7766. Could you please mute yourself? Thank you. Thank you. I, I know I've got my uh, short windedness. It's gotten too long. But I was trying to describe what landed in the lap of this board and the almost crisis point that we are at. So, as you know, in this building, how many of you have turned up, served on boards and commissions? We are living on top of file cabinets and top of file cabinets, many of which are mandatory that we have to keep records. We have the same issue over at the other building. He's got to take his pill now. <laughs> That's the timer. <laughs> Thank you for the laughter. Uh, so um, we have the dilemma. And we came up with an idea. Now, I got to tell you, I'm excited to see all of you. First of all, I've seen many of you a long time, so this is really beautiful. The second part is, you cared enough to come out. Right. That is the best, in my view. Now, can we agree on that something has to be done? I think in the discussion tonight, we've heard it, that yes, we have to agree on something has to be done. Do we have another space to do it in? We've looked. We have not been able to find one that meets the needs of office space, storage, and meeting space. Because we are not rich in those things. So we have to find a way. So this is an offer location. We can look at other locations. The board heard certainly from the church. We've heard from the board has talked about it, about where to place it. And one of the things we're currently looking at is tucking it away over here in the backyard across the parking lot if that's a possibility so we're studying those issues it's not written in stone but we understand and we heard and we listened to the community members who have contacted us through letters who have contacted us through email who have contacted us through phone calls and now with your fabulous presence so i ask in my ask that you consider the motion before us because it is a dilemma that we do not have another solution for to meet all of the pieces that have to be met. And we have to be careful also of our requirement to take care of the people who work for us and the future people who might be working for us. So that's what I have. And I'm sorry for the long way to start. <laughs> All right, let's try to wrap this up, but obviously, sir. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Dick Tuttle again. Uh, first of all, I, I do want to come from the board. Um, this is a very thorny problem, and it is, of course, why you get the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I actually discussed uh, town government uh, to a couple of colleagues overseas, and they were very interested. At the end of the day, they said, well, how, how, how how much do you get paid for serving on the Board of Finance? And I said, I don't get paid. <laughs> this was when I was on the Board of Finance. Um, and, and, and they were just astounded. Uh, and and, and we're, doing, we're doing this, all of us, for, for the love of the town. Um, so I think that um, since we, we should have general agreement that we have to do something, 
Uh, what I'm hearing uh, of a temporary nature, if we um, qualify that in quotes, uh, because what we're using now is going to be unusable, unusable uh, very quickly. Um, so something temporary has to be done. I, temporary in my book, I, I think has a, it's going to be at least until 2028. And I wouldn't be surprised if it won another 10 years, but, but whatever. Um, we definitely have to do something. And the discussion of the town, hall, replacing the town hall in a, in a grander overarching uh, manner. I think um, we're gonna have to wait uh, on that issue. So my thought is um, we vote the capital uh, plan down tonight and come back back to us very quickly. And uh, and uh, I, with this particular provision taken out of it, until you really have a, a tie down a, a location that works for everybody, yes. and, um, and 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 we approve uh, as a temporary measure. Okay, I, the capital plan without the, without this uh, uh, item in it, this line item. And, and we can't do that tonight, I recognize, but we can do that very quickly. Right, just for clarity, we can't pick and choose. It's, there's one motion before us tonight. We can't prove half that. That's, that's, that's quite true. I wasn't suggesting that. Okay. We, would have to, we would have to vote it down tonight, and then you would come back to us very quickly uh, without, without that line item. Is there any further discussion from Mr. Oh, there is. Yeah, I was trying to get to them. I was just trying to get the room done first, and then Mr. Hathaway. Hi, it's Milton Hathaway, uh, been in town and voters for four years as anybody else. <laughs> so there I am with the new thing. My comment is that uh been on two economic two economic development for the town downtown has 13 times. Uh, you know, Bolton is the only one to get to my knowledge that's had a decrease in population in the last 20 years. I go to the meetings on a monthly basis, and I check up with those people. And it's interesting to see how they get money. In other words, I'm a business guy, I got an MBA. The most important thing I ever learned was two males you got income and you got expense. And one of the things that I said a lot to a lot of these meetings is, you know, it seems like the have this thing, we want a new fire truck, we want a new bobcat, we want certain things, which I'm not disagreeing with you. But I'm saying, as a business person, we got to be able to show the money. So this is going to be very brief. But so what I'm saying is, we got quite a bit of land that's been zoned commercial in town. And in my opinion, there's numerous, I was on the economic development commission. Seven years there, and we used to do a report. There were excellent people on it. We had good reasons to resign, but there were three people that were dead. Now. And we went to the meetings, particularly I went to all the meetings, uh, I had very few meetings in the last seven years. And there's all kinds of new businesses being built in all of these towns. And I know the people, you know, I know the economic development chairman uh, and every and every town. So my suggestion is, and it's not the purpose of this meeting, but what we got to do here is change the way we're doing business in Bolton. And, and the Economic Development Commission was letting you know who the new business is. Like you just put the dollar store in there. I'm just using one simple example. But I've been seeing that for seven years. Would, would you care to speak to this motion, Mr. Hathaway? Right. Speak to this motion if you would, and we'll. Well, I am. I'm opposed to it. And this is, and, and, uh, and so I'll some other. Yeah, I have a. Business Thank you. Anyone else from within the room before I go online? I see Lori's iPhone has had their hand up for quite a while. Lori, would you care to speak? Lori's iPhone. Until Lori joins us again, I see also Adam Teller's hand. Thank you. Oh, is that Lori? Go ahead, Adam. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say that the this town has dithered over the fate of the Notch Road Municipal Center, and frankly, over the fate of Town Hall for maybe 20 years. 
And the Notch Road Municipal Center as it exists now or as it existed 10 years ago has never and is not a solution for this problem. And I, I, as somebody who's watched that or been involved in it at times and now been involved in it as a, as a selectman, it is not the solution and it will never be the solution. It should just be forgotten at this point. But that said, I understand the frustration because um, about this temporary building suggestion, even though I voted for it as selectman, I voted for it without, I think, a complete in investigation of all of the al alternatives um, being put before us as selectmen. And I now regret, frankly, having supported it, and I don't now support it until that information is made more clear and more transparent. Number one, it's my understanding that in the last uh, go round, the most recent go round, investigation was made of using two classrooms at the senior center, which are being vacated by the Y. To, and it's my understanding, or it is, it's not clear to me why those two classrooms aren't sufficient to house the um, employees whose offices had to be moved out of the Notch Road Municipal Center. And I'd like to see, and I've asked the administration for an examination and an analysis of why that isn't sufficient. We're hearing about meeting rooms, but I don't understand why meeting rooms are a priority right now. Right now we're meeting, most um, organizations are meeting remotely if they don't have available meeting space. There is other available meeting space in town at, not, at, um, at Herrick Park, at the fire department. Um, this, and other places. So I don't think meeting space should drive a hundred and sixty or hundred and eighty thousand dollar purchase. I'd like to know, and it hasn't been answered yet, why the space at the senior center is not sufficient for the storage and employee offices that have to be moved. And until that's I'm convinced of that, I'm not going to support this. And I'd be perfectly okay if the town votes it down because the short delay isn't going to mean much um, in, terms of, in, in terms of whether these temporary buildings have to be purchased or not. I notice, I note that there's also been, um, when I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission, there was a proposal for um, office space to be built uh, in the neighborhood business zone along Route 85. That space is still vacant. Not the the offices weren't built, but the ground space is still vacant. Maybe there could be a short term or, or a three year ground lease for that space. So maybe there could be something done there. But I think there are alternatives to this um, that don't involve an ugly building right in the historic center of town. Um, that said, if it turns out that there aren't alternatives to that then that's what we have to have. And that's the price for the fact that we've dithered over these buildings for 20 years without a real plan. Next time a plan comes to you in the form of a referendum over building a new town hall, think seriously before you vote it down because it might be 10 more years before another one comes to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schiller. Anyone else online? Uh, Mr. Treat had um, wanted to make a comment. Okay, go ahead. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. Um, I first would like to thank all five selectmen who have given of their time to help me understand the current uh, proposal of the uh, temporary building between town, existing town hall and Bolton Congregational Church. I am unalterably opposed to that location in the historic center of Bolton, uh, and I oppose any temporary building uh, within the boundaries of the uh, National Historic uh, designation that Bolton has been honored with. Um, all the selectmen have taught me things, uh, and I'm grateful. Uh, I think that the temporary building uh, if we have to go to it, I share 
Adam's interest in exploring existing space that is uh, somewhat less fully occupied in a year of uh, low enrollment at our schools, that, that would be a good possibility uh, to fully uh, explore. Um, I think as a modern business, Bolton government ought to consider having employees work from home in those scenarios where it is possible. Um, for the moment, uh, I would suggest that the, if we have to turn to the temporary building, that it be located at Notch Road, perhaps not in back, if that is encumbered by a recreational uh, usage only, but put it in front. The building is 36 feet by 60. Uh, it's a little bit wider when you've got the ramps on it to get in and out, but it could be shoehorned in there and it would be offensive. Uh, but I believe that the future holds a government building, a town hall that will rise uh, on the demolished remains of the building that's still barely standing and having the town get used to that location as at least a portion of current government would be a reasonable step in that direction. It would prevent the, the ruination of our town, historic town center. And it's, to me, the town center of Bolton is the core of our identity as citizens of Bolton, but as citizens of Connecticut and citizens of the United States that flowed from events that took place on that very ground. Um, so if we have to have the built, let's try to avoid having a building in rational ways that have been proposed this evening. Uh, if we cannot avoid the building, let's put it over on the uh, Notch Road site, shoehorned it in anywhere it will fit. And there is some place it will fit, although I haven't been there with a tape measure. Um, and move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tree. Anyone else online wish to, wish to be heard? Seeing nothing. Oh, Lori's, uh, back. Lori's iPhone. All right. Lori, I'm you... sorry. Can you this time? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, this is Lori Brooks from 46 Country Club Road. Um, I'd just like to express that I'm opposed to the motion and wanted to just throw it out there that there's been people working successfully at home during COVID and wanted to know if anyone has polled the employees to see if they would continue to work success successfully at home um, in the interim. Also, there's Iron Mountain for storage. And I think that it's just in the best interest of the town to explore other options at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Anyone else online wish to be heard? All right, with some hesitation, I've turned back to the room. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to address the motion. I'd like to amend the motion. I am the maker of the motion. I would like to amend the motion. Is there a parliamentary question, Mr. Yeah, there is. As far as I know, the motion was, oh, I see. All right, so the full board called this for an annual town meeting. And that's part of the call? Yeah, I, I think it would take. Um, I believe there is a motion before us and it has been seconded. You're right. The question can't be amended, but the motion can be amended. Right. But yeah, I, I'll but let's hear the, the proposed amendment. And um, I think, anticipating what it is, I don't think there'll be any issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> I amend my motion to say that the five-year capital improvement plan be accepted with the exception of the temporary building and that is to be removed as presented by the board of selectmen and the board of education 
in the annual budget documents. And may I address my motion? Um, certainly. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with um, the call for the annual town meeting did not give that option. Unfortunately, I, I like what you're doing and, and I, I hate to see the, for instance, the Board of Education portion of this go down if the Board of Selectmen is voted down tonight, but there, there wasn't, you're proposing a motion that's not properly for the town and um, I- it's not warm. I, I just have concerns about the uh, the legality of that. Don't come over here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. So I can't accept that amendment. Thank you. Very much. But we're all with you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Armida. May May I address May I address? Yes, of course. Oh, sure. You let her go first. <laughs> just because she's first selected. Well, I just told her no. I, I know I know where some... <laughs> Friends. So I would like to have it removed because I hear what is being said. At this point, however, it cannot be removed. And we have a full five year capital plan for two parts of the town government, Board of Education and the town side. My pledge to you as first selectman, but I'm only one of five, is that we will bring this plan back. We will come back to you. If you pass this tonight, because we will come back. I see the head shaking. That's why I tried to remove it. It's the best I can do. You turn it down, it turns down everything. My hope would then be that we will come back to you within before the 26th uh, for the for the for the town referendum vote, and we'll come back with a revised town five-year capital improvement plan. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Moder, <laughs> Mr. Armida. Yeah, uh, you know we we've been sitting here for quite a while talking about this, and it. We all know we have to do something. And we all know that it's not going to be right there. There was nothing in the capital plan that said a building is going to sit there. That was a proposal that was thrown out to get input from the community, which we've got. It's very obvious that we're not going to put it here. It's very obvious that nobody wants it in the center of town. So I'm not telling you not to vote the thing down because I'm sure that's what's going to happen. But we will be coming back, at least from my perspective, we'll be coming back with with a proposal for a temporary structure, not on not located in the historic district of the town, but we, we will have to bring something back. And, and I hope the people understand that we're doing our best to meet the needs of the community at the cheapest price we can with the least interruption. And like I said, that was simply a proposal. Nowhere in the capital plan does it say it's gonna sit there. It just talks about purchasing, least purchasing the structure. So I, I, I'm seeing Sandy shaking her head. I know you're going to vote it down. That's, that's not the, the question right now. And I understand the reasons. And I'm, I was fully expecting to see everybody here tonight to object to that. I, you know, I spoke with Dick for a long period at the, at the church. And, and it's, it's not a big deal. I mean, this, if it offends people, then it shouldn't go here. And, you know. It can go someplace else, but we do need the structure. So you'll you'll hear from us in the next couple of days, and with a different, with a location identified, probably the same type of structure, but find a place for it that won't be as offensive to the community. And and that's all I can tell you. You know, we're listening to you. As I said to Paul, my ears are open, and and all our ears are open, and we didn't have this cast in stone. We, it was a simple proposal made, and and this is what we got for it, and it's good. This is not a bad thing, you know. To to argue and and talk amongst friends and neighbors is not a bad thing, and we listen. So you'll hear from us very soon. 
with a different location, but probably the same type of structure. I see one hand raised. I'm just saying, move the question. One, two. One thing that I think missing is Adam, one thing that's missing is Adam Teller's request to do a little study of the spaces available, especially for two classrooms at the uh, senior center. So you can use what, what you're saying is that you're going to look for or add something that says it's going to be a structure. And I think what he was saying was we, we, we already have done that. Oh, if we, we've gone through. You know, our town staff has been very diligent in trying to figure out how to move everybody around once things close down, from moving the Y to the school and big borrowing space over there. Are any of these things written down so that uh, somebody who's questioning the first study about the uh, old building? Oh, those are readily available. They're, those were done and paid for by you. And so I think that would be helpful to so people could understand why you're not going to take that. Yeah, those, those I've heard about two years. Those studies have been all of them have been available. The last one was two years ago, three years ago. Five. No, it wasn't even that long ago. Yes, it was. Yeah, but five, five, five years ago already. Yeah. Let me try to take, retake control of this public. <laughs> <laughs> one, one second. I'll give me one second. One second. One second. I'm going to be here at 11 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have done all of this. It's all ready and fit. So that tells me you are not going to want to hold the whole study, but <laughs> perhaps you can something. continue this out in the hallway. When you're <laughs> yeah, but yeah. all right, so I know this is this is exactly this is the cornerstone of American democracy. This town meeting is wonderful. I think tonight's been informative for everyone. But I would entertain a motion to call the question if the if the so members we'll, of the vote felt. I'll that. second your motion. All right. Is there any opposition <laughs> to that motion? It's not debatable. All right. <laughs> I didn't want it to be. All right. At this point, then. We're going to take the uh, the vote on item number three, and um, I'm going to start it the first time. We're just going to do it by by voice vote. If it's clear one's one position uh, outweighs the other, then we won't have to do it by throwing of hands or whatever. So initially, I'm going to ask people who are in favor of the motion motion passing as set forth indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. Those who are opposed to that same motion passing, please signify by saying nay. Yeah. Is there any dispute in the crowd that the navy have carried the day? Nope. Heard that then the motion does not pass. Item number three. Is there a motion? Uh, so moved to adjourn. To adjourn. Is that seconded? <laughs> any discussion? The motion is adjourned. Thank you all. So I ask if you all please rise and we're going to salute the flag. Oh, I'm going to sign off so that you guys can have control. Have a lovely night. Thank you, Kathy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you all uh, for those that have, who have stayed with us. We do have the opportunity to have public comment. Is there anyone who would like to speak that did not have their voices heard? And any topic at all is allowed at public comment. Mrs. Klein? I just wanted to finish what I was saying. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to finish what I was saying because I didn't get it all in. <laughs> Two um, minutes is, is yours, ma'am. Okay. I just thought. I know that you said that there are records of the study for the school that needs to be demolished, and that's great. But I know that somebody from the Board of Finance doesn't know that or didn't know that and had a team and group concerns about that. So there's, I mean, it would be nice if people knew, and I know that they're not. I uh, just would like to. Could I just respond? No, you cannot. It's what? public comment. You may not respond. I'm sorry. That's not right. I, I just want to tell you, Mr. Moore, Mr. No, Mr. Armita, he was, it was explained to him last week. And then the other thing is that somebody says I we looked at the rooms and they didn't. 
It would be nice to see a report on that. The people say, oh, that's all. I'd like to know all the information for rooms available. Building, but if I can see for myself that there's a report and study done, it doesn't have to be a big study, you know, what transpired, it would help me to make an informed decision. Thank you. Can I respond now? You, but Mike, you could respond at the back of the room. At the back of the room. Uh, we will be discussing it. It will be a part of the um it's on our agenda. Our agenda I and I will that. be moving I will be moving it up as the next item on the agenda. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I love cooperation. It's a beautiful thing. Are there anybody else that would like to address on any topic that is before us tonight? Yes. Oh. If we have one on, we have one here and one online. We'll go switch to online, Mr. Treat. Uh, thank you very much, Richard Treat, Eight Lyman Road. Uh, my experience as a Zoom attendant to the meeting was <laughs> dismal. Uh, dismal and unacceptable. Um, I felt like a tenth class citizen. Um, I ask you to revise the manner in which people are recognized at these gatherings. People uh, on the floor got four chances to speak before I got a chance to say a word. This is not right. Um, it can be readily uh, dealt with. And I ask you to do so at all possible haste. And I also ask you to find a way to allow citizens of Bolton attending a town meeting to vote from the screen scenario. I thank you for listening and I hope you are, uh, will act on my request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Treat. Mr. Fournier. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, if the budget comes back up, I'd like you to bring up to the people that if the inflation and the cost, I'm in the construction business and the inflation and the cost of buildings is, is going up so rapidly that without doing anything now, the cost is just going to increase. What was it, eight percent inflation this year? So if we hit the inflation, so anyways, it's, it's just going to expand the cost of everything. And and in six years, when we go to build the town hall, it's not going to be five million dollars anymore. So we really should move soon because it's only going to get out of control in the cost. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else online? We'll go, we'll switch back and forth to people online. Is there anybody else online? Uh, Mr. Gordon, do you have, an, did you have your hand up? No, I don't see that. Okay. And we have a, two selectmen and we have a town employee. So I think we're good online. Is there anybody else in the audience would like to speak? Thank you. So for the past 20 plus years, we've been talking about a town hall. And it's finally gotten to the point where it's gonna, it's at a breaking point, but it didn't take the next 10 years to get the public on board. Madam Chair, I'm having trouble hearing. I don't know if there's a microphone that can be turned up, but. Anna, would you come forward to a front seat so that the owl, our friend, the owl can um, pick you up more easily. Thank you, Mr. Keller. With, with the, the problem with spending that much money, and, and getting the town behind it, it's gonna take years. My suggestion is once this temporary situation slash permanent situation, while this is being figured out, you need to rally the, the public behind you because I've been at meetings for the past 20 years and studies and whatnot. And without getting the public behind us, it's not going to happen in 10 years. Because like Brad said, it's going to be more expensive. So I suggest somehow that it become topic of conversation in some way in which we start to really explain to the rest of the people that, that no offense, but the same people we saw here tonight are the same people we see all the time. And so in order to get the other 90% of the 99% of the town educated, 
I would I would really like to see the town try to make this a maybe Jane Eyre can help. Um, a, a topic of conversation where where people can get behind it and share their ideas. I mean, encouragement. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is there and anybody? The, and the other point oh, I, I have that. is the Board of Education got voted down tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Did it move lumped in? That's why I tried to split the call. Why do we do that? Why do we lump? Why can't each thing that needs to come up have its own motion? So that things don't get voted down. Half the people. Mm -hmm. we're, no, we're bound excuse, by ordinance. Excuse me, Mr. I know. We are bound by ordinance. We are bound by ordinance. To, 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 to a certain amount, Mr. To a certain amount, we have to lump them together to get to that amount. Oh, I see what you're saying. Dollar wise. Some towns. We'll discuss it later because we're not supposed to go back and forth. Okay. That's all right. I was That's almost caught. Right. Can you hear caught. me, Adam? Now you're, you're muted. You're muted. Yeah, I couldn't hear all of that. Ross Lally, would you come? Hi, Ross Lally, 41 Notch Road. I'm just going to follow up on what Romney said and Maureen said is that I've been on board of finance for several years now and the school has a very good five-year plan that they put out there, and our superintendent of schools can explain every part of it and how if you take this little bit out of here, the whole thing falls apart. And I've also been involved with Bolton living here 12 years and coming to church here 17 years, and I've watched our schools get added on to money for schools comes up, we have money for the fire department and it comes back to is, you guys really need to tell the story better because the voters will spend the money if they have a story that's told to them that makes sense, it fits together and shows how this helps the town. And I feel that's what's really been lacking and you're doing yourselves a disservice by not having that well-crafted story that tells why we need to do all these things and why we need to spend you know the money so that's it and i know i've actually said that a board of finance and that's what i really feel would help you know if so i'm saying this really as trying to help with this that we really need to have a better story a better explanation of what <laughs> the pieces fit together and what happens when you don't do things like this because okay it's okay now but down the road this is going to blow up and have that consequence very clearly, you know, explained. So I will put that on because I heard a lot of like blaming the voters and yet they are willing to spend the money elsewhere. So there's something going on. So thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Is there anybody else in the back of the room who wants to say anything who didn't say anything before? Nope. <laughs> Would you like to say something? <laughs> Miss Kathy Nelson, would you come forward? <laughs> okay. Ma'am, would you like to could you like to bring up the some concepts tonight? Well, I'm at the church a lot, poking around, and I see a lot of people walking around the town hall taking pictures. So that ugly building isn't going to get fixed with people that are out of state and want this dream. That's my opinion. Thank you. You can go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> She wouldn't, she would, she told me she wouldn't talk if she came here, so you got her to do it. That's for you. That's what I'm saying. And did you hear her? Oh, no. no. Uh, I didn't hear. I that didn't an ugly hear. building is not going to cut it? Okay. That's, yeah. that, that's a very good synopsis, Mr. Teller. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody else? Um, nobody else that uh, joined us online, but if there's anybody else in the audience that would like to speak, if not, Linda Dick? No? 
Thank you. Very good. Then I will move on. Thank you very much for the public comment. I am going to skip down because uh, it takes chairman's prerogative. We're going to skip over the minutes, the resignation. We're going to go to number five, a properties and facilities report. And we are going to do B, the Bolton Congregational Church office space. I'm going to ask <laughs> Marion to please step forward and join us where we can hear you. Yeah, and both places. What if I stand over here? Then I can Talk for everybody. Bob, Bob DePietro online, can you hear Gwen from where she is? She speaks loud. Can you hear that, Bob? Sort of. Well, I, I think you have just come a little closer to the okay. owl. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Gwen Marion, 38 Maple Valley Road, and I'm here to, uh, to represent the Bolton Congregational Church. And Good. Can you hear me? Okay, good, good. Um, first, I wanted to say thank you to First Select Person Pam Sawyer for bringing to the attend the to the church's attention the fact that there was going to be a temporary building here. And you you called me. You said, "Could I come to church and present to the to the congregation?" And that that was a wonderful gesture and a wonderful way to to keep communication open. Mm -hmm. in in town so uh, pam attended the service and then she uh, came and did a presentation afterwards and I, so thank you very much for doing that and um thank you to uh, bob DePietro and adam and mike for uh touring the education building with richard treat i appreciate you taking the time to do that i think it's irreplaceable to actually see what you're talking about i think you, you get a much better feel for what's going on when you actually are you have your, your feet on the ground so I'm here to talk about an alternative to the temporary building, which is to offer a discussion about a lease of space in the education building. And you all have, you should have in front of you, because I brought, over, brought them over today, that colorful sheet there, uh, which is, I don't know, I hope Adam, I hope you were able to get a hold of one. And Bob, it's this, this is a floor plan. I did drop these off at the town hall. It's a floor plan of the education building. And uh, the church is, is offering uh, about 1,400 square feet of classroom space, which is slightly more than the 1,300 of, of uh, space that's being used now at Notch Road Municipal Center. Um, on this diagram, there are there what you see in gray, and I'm sorry that Adam and, and have this. Um, is there a way they to were, put it was emailed to them this afternoon the supplemental package okay so if it was just... i didn't see it but i'll look for it now okay, so Probably the last page i believe kathy sent it over to you this afternoon yep so in gray are the areas that are being offered for exclusive town use and the areas in green would be reserved for church exclusive use and the yellow would be shared use uh, the church is ready to offer this space at market rate rent, which we feel would save the town a lot of money compared to uh, what the temporary building was being, being proposed at. So we're talking about roughly $15 a square foot plus a portion of utilities, which would come out to be about $22,000 a year. And I'm just using the figures that were in the capital plan that just got it voted down. But if we, if those figures, if we're working off of those figures, the first year savings would be about $45,000. Second year savings would be about $21,000. And the third year savings would be about $34,000. So again, that's based off of the numbers that are in the five-year capital plan. Uh, I can't, I don't, yes. Go ahead. Just the, the amount of savings really isn't a savings to the town because we have to fill if we take the money out of the five-year capital plan we have to replace it with something else and we have to budget this in our regular regular budget so okay. in essence the 27 or, or whatever thousand is an increase in our budget each year because we will be putting whatever comes out of the capital plan in 
and this would be have to be added to our regular budget. So there, there isn't a savings. It's actually an increase in the overall town budget to do this. Unless you're going to be looking at renting a temporary building, but putting it somewhere else, you, the rent for those that building might be the same as what you have in, in the five year plan. Well, that's if, right? if we if we take a temporary building and put it say at Notch Road, then it's the money that's in the five year capital plan that's dictated by charter filling up that 1% or one mil. If we take that out, we have to put something else in to make up that one mil, whether it be tractors or trucks or something to make, fill the charter requirement of the one mil. Mm -hmm. And then this money has to come out of the operating budget because it's not that type of thing with lease purchase. Uh, so this would actually increase our budget by about, if you say 25,000 a year, over three years will increase our budget $75,000. Well, I don't quite follow that because you're, you'd be taking out the expense of renting a temporary building. Right. Can I get, go but we have to fill that with something else. Because of the minimum requirement. Because of the okay. one by the but, requirement. but it solves the, it solves your space problem. Now. That, I mean, that's the goal of the church is really not to have you sign a lease with the church. Right. I think, I think it solves your problem, but the goal of the church is to just not have you have this temporary building. Right. Well, the temporary My, building is not going there. You can, I'll guarantee Mike, that. Mike, could she con continue and complete well, her I presentation? She's in presentation mode. Please. Okay. Yes. It, you. It, it just, it would cost us more. If we do this, we have the building, we pay for it, and we can sell. So there's some money back on the end. The way you proposed it, we still have to have the one minute. And then we have to pay for this operating. Thank you, Mike. So it's actually budgeting. The, the link, the that's link. That's another the link to the map is in the chat if anybody's looking for it. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gwen. So, Bob and Adam, I hope you have had access to the floor plan. Um, so, the town is, I mean, the church would be offering a uh, even more space than what's being used right now in uh, Notch Road Municipal Center, uh, plus shared space for big meetings like this. You would not have to be moving anything around. Uh, uh, the have the use of the fellowship hall, which can seat, I believe it's 125. Dick, do you have that number? Is that right? Yeah, it might be a little higher. So, okay, so 125 to 150 people um, could fit there for, for town meetings. Uh, the building is uh, handicap accessible because the uh, entrance on the west side is at grade, as you as the um, right near the, the circular parking area that's at grade, so that's accessible. Uh, both bathrooms, I believe, are also ADA, ADA accessible, mm -hmm. and the uh, building was recently renovated in the last, I think it's been four or five years now. Um, and the duration of the lease uh, would be a minimum of five years. If you would like to talk about a longer term, we would be willing to talk about a longer term. And uh, now I know that Adam uh, has expressed some discomfort with the fact that this would be a for uh, it, this would be a this is a building that's owned by a church, and current and future employees might feel a sense of discomfort working in a building owned by a church and the residents might feel a sense of discomfort going into a building owned by a church. And I just want to point out that there have been over the years, uh, numerous groups who either currently use that, use the building or uh, have used the building in the past that have not had any kind of religious affiliation. There was a, a nursery school there that rented space for years and it was run by volunteers and um, a member of our stewardship committee uh, said that there was never any sense of discomfort, never any complaint uh, about the people who attended the nursery school. Um, there was, there's a Buddhist group who meets there now weekly. There is uh, at the Al-Anon group meets, meets there weekly. Girl Scouts meet there. There's a sixth grade girls empowerment group that meets there over during the summer. The Bolton Land Trust has had uh, events there and uh, work parties there, and um, it, it's being rented by community members for personal parties. So I, I feel that, that I know that there is this sense of uh, potential discomfort, but you that is a that's an unknown. And this is we've got some tangible we've got a tangible product that the church can offer you. And I'd like you to weigh the, the tangible um, 
aspects of this lease um, and think about how the, um, the, the sense of, of discomfort is, is really an unknown right now. So I would like, I would hope that the selectmen would say that you want to continue the conversation about the lease. May I have some questions offered or asked by our members? Uh, we'll start online. Bob DiPietro, would you like to ask a question? Not yet. Thank you, Bob, uh, Adam Teller. So Gwen, I, it's not just discomfort that I have, it's, um, it's both philosophical and um, frankly, constitutional objections to using a building like this. I mean, first of all, for example, what will happen if someone or a group comes to protest and it's a public building where they have the right to walk in and sit down and they sit outside, say, the tax assessor's office or the registrar's office, want to make a point, and next door, there's a Boy Scout troop meeting, or there's a, a a religious instruction meeting in a classroom. Okay, they have the right to be there. They have the right to protest. They might even protest loudly. Um, the church has something else going on with children involved. Okay, what if somebody gets upset at their assessment, meeting with the, the tax assessor or the finance department about something? and makes a disruption, okay? These, build, these rooms are interspersed with another use that I do not think is compatible. It's an issue of security. It's an issue of privacy. It can't be blocked off from the other rooms, so you can't have a secure hallway where only people who are appropriately allowed to go into those areas are allowed should have, it may need to have surveillance at some point. Is that something that people in the church are gonna be comfortable with, their children being on a, a video camera? Um, what about people who they might, you know, otherwise want to exclude from their area, but they can't because it's a public building and people have the right to go into it to do their public business. And are they going to be willing to strip the hallways of all references to religion? Because I don't think I should have to go into a building where I do my public business and see religious icons or religious information or religious slogans. Okay. I mean, you know, we're very friendly and neighborly and, and happy with each other until we're not. And you know, to just sort of assume that it's okay to intersperse public. Um, function in a building that is dedicated to religious purposes is, I'm sorry, it's a little insulting. People who are not religious, who are not, you know, particular or not of that particular religion, or perhaps a religion that doesn't have the same understanding of what it should be. I mean, this the town was founded as a congregationalist town. It exists because because that church created a parish, but that's not how it is anymore. And I, I quite frankly, strongly object to the idea that that's, that's something we should do again. Um, and I don't mean to be provocative or insulting to anyone, <laughs> but I do find it not appropriate to mix that kind of thing. Now, if the church were offering to lease us the whole building, that would be slightly different because then the town would control the space. But in this case, we would be your, your tenant. And as somebody who's represented both landlords and tenants over the years, there are times when landlords and tenants disagree about the way a space should be run or the way a space should be managed or how, what should be allowed inside it. And I, as a tenant, don't want to be beholden to a church board about what we're gonna be allowed to do in a public building or a building that has public purposes. I just think that's a recipe for disaster. And, you know, sure, other groups may have voluntarily used that building, but this is not voluntary on the part of people who might be, be called to be there. It's not voluntary for the employees, not voluntary for the putative 
future employee we hire, and it's not voluntary for members of the public who have to do public business there. And that's not acceptable to me as a selectman or as a citizen. So I, I absolutely appreciate the effort that's being put into this and the, the, the offer, and I absolutely appreciate the depth of the church's objection to having a temporary building in that space, and I completely hear it and want to avoid it as well, and will do my best to do so, but this is not the answer. Not for me. I, there is no possibility that I will ever vote for this, and that's fine. I'm only one member of this board, but I will not only not vote for it, but as long as it exists, I will try to make it stop. I'm, I'm sorry. That's just how, de how deep the, the strength of my feeling about this particular subject is. Thank you, Mr. Teller. Mr. Ermita. Yeah. Uh, the, I, I don't agree completely, and, and maybe some of the things he, the way he phrased it, but I do uh, respect the separation of church and state. My wife and I argued this before I came tonight because she's on the other side of the aisle. But uh, the, the first thing, the, the Buddhist church, they worship during the week, correct? Uh, it's I no no I don't think so I think it's at night. It's it's either a, a Friday night or all day Saturday. All right, but regardless of that, it the fellowship hall is being used as a church. Well, I don't think they actually. No, I don't think they use the classroom, and I don't think they're. From what I understand, it's more like a meditative group. It's but, not. It's not a. I but it's a it's religious meeting. group that meets in there. So yes. for all intents and purposes, and and thinking like Adam does, it, it's a religious part of the church. It's it's a church of some sort in there, whether we define it as the typical church or not, it, it's a religious service of some sort. It's a religious group. Maybe. Right, right. And and I, I do agree with Adam. And, and I had three objections when Dick and I walked through the place. The first is the non-connectivity uh, of the, the three spaces, which will make it hard for people to function. They'll be walking down the hall and with other people in there, they'll be, they'll be intermingling with people doing religious work or in town work, so to speak. So, uh, you know, Adam, Adam mentioned that and, and I agree with the, the fact that it's not, they're not adjacent to each other and it's not the whole structure. The whole structure would be a whole different story. But, but as it sits, that part bothers me. The second part bothers me in the fact that, and, and I said it to, to Dick when we were there, you know, you, you're willing to lease us the space, but God forbid something happens with the church sanctuary and you can't meet there. All of a sudden now you're going to be meeting in your church hall, which I would do if I was a member of the parish. And all of a sudden now our office building is truly a church. And that, that's an objection to me when it comes to the constitutional aspects of it. The third thing, is, is the, the separation of church and state. And, and I, I'm not a deeply religious person. I, I, I'm bordering on atheistic, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, my son, if you ask him what he worships, he worships elephants. He's, it, no, it, I, I attended, I, I was brought up Catholic and I, I lost touch with that when they, they told me my mother was a Protestant and she was going to hell because she wasn't Catholic. And at, from that point on, religion and I parted ways. And, and I, I don't necessarily believe in an almighty. And, you know, if, if there is one, and because I didn't believe for my whole life, he wants to punish me, I'll take my hands. But I'll live a decent life as best I can. But, but it does bother me to be there. And, and I'm not as adamant as Adam is. I will walk into the building and I wouldn't have a problem walking into the building with a religious service going on as Mike Aramita private citizen. I would have a problem going in there as Mike Aramita selectman or Mike Aramita, an employee of the town. That would bother me. And I'm just one, but I have heard from others who feel the same way. So it's not just the one person. One second, and I'll get right to you. Uh, you know, if it's only one person, we shouldn't do it. But there's a lot of, you know, like Adam said, this was a Protestant community. That's why the church is there. That's why they met in the basement of the church for 100 years, because everybody in town was part of the congregation and it wasn't a big deal. But we've got dozens of different religions here in town now. And 
if it upsets me, it's going to upset somebody else. And if it upsets Adam, it's going to upset somebody else. And I don't believe we should upset anybody or make it uncomfortable for anybody coming into our town facilities. Those are the three reasons why I object to it. And, you know, I, I welcome, actually, I didn't, didn't get to the, the other one, and that's the, the length of time. But that falls in with, you know, if the church needed the space for some ungodly reason. But that's my reason why I told Dick I didn't agree with it. And, uh, Thank you. you know, I, I'm very happy and I'm very thankful for the offer. But, but if it was up to me, and it will be up to me to cast a vote, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say thank you. But Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. I have to apologize to the audience. We are not in public comment at this time, so I can't I, I can't accept the comments from the audience. My apologies. I'll, I'll give you your FYI back. Thank you, ma'am. That was Mr. Aramita. You said Mr. Aramita. Yes. Mr. Moore, you have not spoken. Would you like to address the scene? Would you like to pass over to Bob <laughs> DePietro for the sure. moment? Pass for a moment. Excuse me. Mr. Er Mr. DePietro, would you like to comment? You're on mute, sir. I still think that maybe it could be adjusted somehow. So for the time being, it's a more acceptable interim way to handle this. We'll see. We'll see. I was excited about it in the beginning, but I certainly understand some of the points that Mike and Adam made. I just feel a little differently. Okay, five years is maybe not a good, if it were, if it were one or two, two years, and there were certain requirements in the lease to alleviate some of those concerns that were raised by Michael and Adam may even be more acceptable. But we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm not happy. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody, too, that the church, uh, the town used St. Morris as a voting place at yeah, least yeah. once. We should. Sure. So well, uh, may, I, may I, that is under the purview of the registrar of voters and they come under the secretary of state. They are elected on their own right. And it's not a, a, a board of selectmen um, decision. The board of selectmen did not, did not make that decision to, to hold the vote, to hold that as the polling place? We, we, we voted to use that as a polling place and I kicked myself in the keister when I left for Voting that I way. apologize. I stand corrected. That was before my time of service. Mm -hmm. I believe I still am correct that it is within their purview to pick the polling place as registrars of voters. Okay. And I also uh, just wanted to remind you that the town has had a long term lease with a school, a religious school over at Knoxville Municipal Center, which is just another example oh. of the, the town and all, uh, the all things. Excuse me, Gwen, but all things that happened before I was on this board, and I never would have let it happen if I could have stopped it. And I'm just pointing out some there's some <laughs> history of town church cooperation. Understood. In 1858 and 1934, all town business was done in the basement of that church. So, and I and I can't say that every single person who walked in there was a congregationalist. I I, I don't know if that was true or not. So, uh, yeah. So. I'm sorry. I just want to. I just encourage you. I think it's. I think it's an option. You, there's a sense of urgency that we that we heard from the last hour and a half about a space need, and it's a. It's a. It, it, if you walked into that building and you did not know that it was located behind a church or if it was owned by a church, I think you would have no idea that it's a church building. There's no religious iconography in the building except for one mural, which is in the last classroom, which can be covered. There's, there are no crosses. It's a, it's a, it's a beautifully redone building that uh, looks like a, a community hall. And mm -hmm. at, at, from the, the um, examples that I gave you before, it is being used as a community hall. And I feel that it would be appropriate to at least talk further about details such as duration, 
whether we could make the spaces contiguous as as you brought up uh, the security issue the there and it's also unlikely that there's going to be uh, religious education going on while they're during uh, hours of business because that happens on Sundays after after services. I don't think that any there's any religious education during the week. So and that that could be something that we talk about too in terms of the sh how the space is shared. So I would just encourage all of you to, to just keep an open mind about this possibility that could solve the urgent space problem. Mr. Moore, do you have a question? Yeah, no, yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, no not a question. Just uh, initially, when uh, the first presentation, we were talking about a three-year um, lease, and the town can enter it. The, the board can enter it. Anything beyond that has to go before a town meeting. So if for us to even consider that, that whole process would have to go before a town meeting. And I would not even consider doing anything here unless I had a comfort level that we, we could have it for at least seven years. I, I, you know, I hate to be the pessimist, but having been through a number of referendums, and I don't care how good of a freaking salesman you are. When it comes down to a school passing, you have how many students in school with how many parents and grandparents who will support it? You have five selectmen. Let's see, yeah, some with friends and whatever. And, and uh, be able to garner enough taxpayer votes to pass a, a referendum. <laughs> so we're going to spend whatever, four or five, whatever million dollars it is, it is a difficult process. It may take one, two, three shots. I mean, it, 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 that, and that's, even if you start now, before you can even propose it, you have to propose it at a time when it's even conceivably affordable. And between now and 28, it's not conceivably affordable. That's my issue with, with this. And I appreciate you coming back with with something differently for me to look at. At least I, I, I'll be I'll be as open minded as I can. Mm -hmm. I'll be candid with you. I'm still looking the other way, but I haven't really have a chance to you know, digest what you have to say in, in in respect to what you're saying. I want to at least listen to what you have to say, digest it, and talk it amongst the board. And, and so, and the board on one, the uh, one quick statement, sir. Please. Make it quick. Uh, I will. If, if we were to rent that for seven to 10 years, then the cost would be significantly more than what the temporary building would cost us over three years and then we own it. After three years, there's no more payments and we would be out from under it and then we could sell it if we needed to. So there, there are some distinct advantages of going that way as opposed to renting or leasing for a, a period of time. Thank you. Are there any other comment, uh, questions for Gwen? Is she stand, Mrs. Marion, as she stands before us? from the board. Uh, okay, uh, this is under uh, reports and updates. We are not considering or acting on it this evening. This is informational for us, and we are grateful that you came and shared with us uh, the document and, and the thoughts of the parish. So will it be on a future agenda? What's going to have to hold a special meeting? It, we're, not, we're going to have to do it quickly. Too. I mean, at some point, you'd have to make a decision. We have to. We have to come up with a special meeting because we have to come back to come up with a, 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 a another town meeting. So yes, we will be. So the, so that. acting on this lease proposal will be an, will be an item on a on a special meeting agenda. Something yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we have to come back for that whole final. We'll have to come back for the entire plan. Yeah. So that okay. means that consideration. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure I'm here to hear your discussion about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure that you get notice. Great. Okay. And okay. we'll have to do it within Absolutely. the next few days. I would think. Yeah, next week or two. Yeah, yeah at the most. Yeah. All right. Then we will move on. Thank so you. So thank you very much for for listening to me. Thank, thank you. you. Not a problem. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do it. We're going to go backwards then uh, at, go to 4A, the resignation of Bruce Amundsen. Uh, I would like to ask Jim to address that, please. No, Bruce has been with the town for a very, very long time. And at this point, he has submitted a letter of resignation uh, for retirement uh, on May 1st. 
Thank yes. you. So I'd like the board to entertain accepting his resignation with regret. I would entertain a motion that we accept it with gratitude and regret. So. Bob Mora, and I need a second. Mike Aramita. Is there any comment from Mr. DiPietro or Mr. Teller? We're all good. Then I will ask for a vote. Hard, um, hard act to follow. To follow. A hard act to follow. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So noted. All in favor say aye. Aye. With regret. Aye. Unanimously. We have a second resignation. And at this time, I need to add to the agenda that we have a second resignation. So I would ask that we inc um, include that under 4B. Mr. Rupert. Uh, today or uh, yesterday, I received a resignation from none other than Gary Silver, who is joining us this evening. Uh, Gary has family that lives in Massachusetts, and he has some uh, job opportunities in the Cambridge area that he has chosen to pursue this time at this time. And he's given me a letter of resignation effective uh, May 27th, which is, uh, you know, I thank him for giving us as much time as he has for his resignation. Uh, Gary, Gary will be a loss to our team. Again, another hard act to follow, but uh, we also encourage him to pursue the things that are best for him and make him happy. Thank you very much for those appropriate words. And from, from this person, I am very grateful for the efforts that you have given uh, in the short time that we've worked together because it's been a pleasure and a pleasure to work with you. And we're glad you were better after COVID. Uh, it, could, are there any other comments from the board? Then I would like to ask for a motion that we accept his resignation with regret and thanks for his service. So moved. Second. Bob Mora, Mr. Aramita, first made and seconded. Are there any other comments? So then I'll ask for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Going back to number five, reports and updates, properties and facilities, consider an act on the three-year Paracchio property lease to Larry Pease. At this time, I would ask for a motion so that we, we extend a three-year lease on the Paracchio property. Mr. Armita moves. I need a second. Oh. Oh, Mr. Second. Thank you very second. much. We've, we've heard from Mr. Pease. Is there any other comment? Thank you. Then moving right along, well, I'll ask for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. It passes unanimously. And I would uh, ask that the town please call Mr. Pease and move forward with a contract. 5B, uh, the budget 21, FY21 budget report, the current budget. And you're up. Mr. Rupert. You all have a copy of it in your package. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, I, I'm really happy to report that again, you know, spend, spending is where we expect it to be at this point in time during the year. Um, there are no red flags. It is a time of year that we begin to see, you know, quite a few budget transfers uh, where, where people are trying to uh, utilize their their budgets um it was there is there any questions on the uh the budget worksheet that you have before you that i am looking to find in my package at the moment it's 5b i think it says on yeah. the top of it it's 5b mm -hmm. yes. Yes. I, don't have I don't have any problems or any questions Adam or Bob, do you have any questions? No. 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 For some reason, I'm just disconnected. <laughs> oh, okay. We can still hear you. Yeah, my my video is disconnected for some reason. So just shout out if you need us. Uh, oh, there we are. I'm back. Very good. You don't have a three hour time limit on our Zoom, do you? No. So uh, the question was just asked, we have a three hour time limit on Zoom and no, we, I, my understanding is we do not. 
So at this time, we'll move on then to B5, large B, small B, consideration of future referendum dates. Uh, we thought we would pre-plan so that we could save the time of having multiple special meetings to be able to find new dates. So we would like to hold dates available uh, of June 7th and June 21st, if we were to need future referendum dates. Uh, I would accept a motion to that effect. I'll so move. I think that's a very appropriate idea, just based on past history. Bob and Moore has moved, and do I have a second? I'll second it, but I'd like to uh, add something that we do our best not to hold it at St. Louis. Thank you. Are there, uh, Mr. I'll accept that. Yeah. Oh, uh, but we have to stop then, please. Would you repeat what you just said? I, I amending. Uh, yeah, I'll accept the the amended motion. Do you want to restate it? Is it your motion? Uh, move that we have the dates we set um, seventh and twenty one, June seventh and June twenty one as future referendum dates. And uh, as maybe I misunderstood what said, Mike said, and uh, see if if in fact we, we can hold it at a at a at a spot other than at that church. I that's, that. that's exactly right. I have a motion, and it is is the amended motion seconded. Yes. By Mr. Aramita. Yes. Discussion. I see hand up, Bob DePietro. Thank you. You He's need muted. Why, Mike? Uh, just for the same reason of continuity on my feelings, uh, I, I, I felt when I expressed my concerns about the separation of church and state last time and then voted for uh, holding at St. Maurice's uh, the election, I uh, kind of kicked myself in the butt when I left because I was deviating from my feelings and uh, that, that's why it's not a hard, fast rule. I'd just like it if we could, if we can find another place, I would appreciate it. And if we may, I made the motion on, in just a comment on it. I think the, the, the operative word is if, if we can find an appropriate alternative. And, yep. and, and if we can't, well, then we're there. Yep. The only reason I bring it up is that I made a big case about putting rails for people like me who have a problem getting up and down. A hair park is an example of good. I can get into hair, hair park, but coming into the town hall is tough unless there's somebody at the door. And it's tough getting out. We shouldn't hold it here because it's not easily accessible. But so it also doesn't meet the, the space requirements right. that the Secretary of State has. So we literally, we literally cannot meet here. Thank you, Bob, for bringing up those important points. We appreciate it. Adam, are you all set? I think he's gone. Did we lose Adam? No, it says phone. But he's muted. Adam, unmute if you'd like to say something. Okay, we have not heard from him. We'll come back to you if you do. Um, but we're going to have to ask for votes, Adam. So I ask that you would unmute. <clears throat> At this time, we have the uh, motion before us for June 7th and 21st with the caveat Mr. Moore has placed. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm going to hold the vote open until we hear from Mr. Teller. And we will return to that vote. He's gone now. Okay, he's gone. Oh, okay. I don't know how he would vote. Adam, are you with us? Trying to come back. We can't hear you yet, Adam. <clears throat> We're going to hold the vote open until we can hear from you. Please feel free to <laughs> shout out when you think you are connected. Thank you. Uh, let's go to, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, budget transfer. I'll make a motion we make all three in one uh, one vote. Can I just put them on the record? Okay, the, uh, the first one is 
budget town clerk, $42 for professional education and training to dues and fees. The second is town building operations from supplies to vehicles. And that's to cover a increase in truck, uh, truck park costs. And town building operations, 5,000 from supplies to repairs and maintenance. And that's to follow accounting procedures, fund and supplies and stuff. Thank you. And I'll second that. Are there any questions from the board members? I don't think Adam's yeah, gone. gone. Okay. Uh, uh, we have to have a vote on this. Is that true? Yes. yes. Then I we have a motion before us. We have it second. Yep. Yep. Uh, at this time, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we will hold the vote open. We have four yeses, but we'll hold that, that vote open also. Uh, six, uh, item six, ongoing business, discuss meeting date with the Farm Commission for, stud for their study. Um, do we have a, 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 has a date been proposed? Before May 26th is what's proposed. Before May 26th. That's my note. Oh, that's a good note. Let's well, take a quick moment in time if you might just hold for. They have important uh, individuals that won't be present for that. And I'm actually going to be taking some time off. Myself. Post after May 26th? Yes, on the 30th. What is that all about? So the, the, the Heritage Farm has been working on a study that was paid for by uh, by a grant um, for the future use of the of the farm, and they are ready to present that um, you know the findings of their study and the plan for the future uh, to the board of selectmen. Okay, I've got to ask the board at this time, and uh, because we have the chairman of the farm commission with us this evening, if she'd be allowed to address the board. Uh, would you would May 10th or Kathy's going to have a coronary we're doing this without sorry I'm back oh we're uh, glad okay good 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 uh, are you available May uh does May Tuesday May 10th next Tuesday work for the farm commission to be able to come and present the study at a special meeting of the board of selectmen um, if I can have two dates Choose them only because I need to send this out to Nelson Edwards Architect. And so it's not just to make sure it's just that. I can't make an understanding. And I don't know what time you're talking. Ma'am? Is this a daytime? Is this an evening? What is, what I, I work for you, so you tell me whatever uh, you want. I'll be away from the 18th, probably till the 30th. Adam Teller. Uh, I'm what, gonna... what time are you talking about? That's what the question is. Can you make a daytime meeting? Yeah. On May 10th? Mm -hmm. No. Or an and or a second date? Um, excuse me. Uh, are we talking about an in-person meeting or a remote? I, I suspect we would do it hybrid, Adam. Hybrid. Okay. We think a lot of uh, you um, are going to bring you in. I, as it stands now, I could do that morning, May 10th. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It'd be hard to do the afternoon. Maybe you can. I'm not here. Okay. okay. We're going to try another date. I'm not here till uh, after four o'clock. Okay. Uh, how about of the May 12th? Why, did we say did we say no to the evening of May 10th? We no, said no, we to didn't. We didn't discuss the evening. No, those um, those nights are all convention nights. That's Thank what I you. That week. Yeah, ours ours is a week before, so yeah. I, I appreciate that. So I wouldn't be available for some of them, most of them. How how long will the fire uh, farm commission? Well. Stay? It, when I asked Sarah, she thought around 20 or 30 minutes yeah. and, and then, and then engage in conversation. So I, I would actually think because if we, we're going to have to have another meeting until we conduct the business of the yeah. 
space requirements that same night. We did it on the Tuesday. Uh, how does the evening May 16th work? Nope. Yeah, it, maybe. I don't know for sure. But I can be on Zoom if I have to. Thank you. Ms. So Fiano, does May 16th? Do we have Tuesday in the morning? Uh, no, no, morning in the evening. evening. The 10th in the evening. But then Adam can't do it at. Adam, are you available yeah. in the evening on the 10th? No. Oh, no. That's one. The conventions I have to attend. That's why I said morning. Okay. Thank May sixteenth, we already have a meeting at two o'clock. Yeah. Right. So what's going on Thursday the twelfth with another convention? There are party conventions going on. The parties. Democratic. Uh, because we have various uh, state nomination offices conventions. conventions. It looks like the 16th. The 16th in the evening <laughs> after our two o'clock meeting. <laughs> Why not? You might as well screw up the whole day. <laughs> the Why don't we just tack it on to the two o'clock meeting? That's right. Hey, we don't know when two o'clock is going to end unless we think, you know. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's going to be a two hour meeting, right? Right. So, I mean, I would say if we if we schedule it maybe for 430, um, that would probably work. So I get to blow the whole afternoon. Yeah. Would you like to have a one o'clock meeting, Mr. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. No, no, I won't be available that early because I've got wow. court that morning. So no, I'm wondering. Okay, so what time on the 16th? On the 16th. So we say 4.30 and then you guys can recess your meeting if you have to for an hour? No, well, yeah, we're limited. We can't go past two hours, right? Right. Doesn't the ground rules say we can't go? Limited it to two hours, right? right. That's our ground rules. But we did we did go past that a little bit last time. Yeah, last time. But by four thirty, we'd be able to do it. By four thirty, we'd be done. That would give us maybe an appropriate, you know, few minute break in between. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I might be home by dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> we would like to propose then. Yep. Okay. Jim, I will send this out. And include you in the email. Thank you. So we'll just hold it open. But wait, why don't we make it a tentative? Right. So we, is this way, if we have to, we can cancel it. Is that, does that make sense? Well, you know, yeah, we would, you know, Pam would just, we would help Pam put it together as a special meeting. Oh, okay. Then we don't have to. Agenda. Wait. So then, then there would be no action required by the board. Okay. Will, will we <laughs> the other item that we talked If about? we put it on the agenda. But I think we're going to have to deal with that sooner. On a separate sooner than that's why I thought. Oh, yeah. no. I don't think we can wait that long. <laughs> okay, I'll make well, myself. Monday, Monday, it's yes, not. Sir. Unfortunately, it sounds like there's not a lot of other opportunity no, between now and the twenty sixth. Mm -hmm. So I need to get. Thank you. Then does it really we'll make a difference if we go into June? It's not like it's going to happen immediately. If this is it? doesn't work, then we'll go into June. Okay. Thank you for understanding. I'm going to uh, go you. back then to item 5B, small b, uh, the, the question before us uh, and was seconded that we'll have the referendum dates uh, June 7th and 21st and with the, an effort made not to hold them at the uh, church site. Uh, Adam, we have four yeses. Would you like to vote? Yes, I. Unanimous. Thank you very much. And the second one for your uh, vote, Adam, is the budget transfers. There was four votes in favor of the three budget transfers. And how would you vote? Uh, I. Thank you. Unanimous. Okay, so those are taken care of. New business. Consider an act on the affordable housing plan. We've had that before us and it is in our packet. Uh, we need to vote on this this month to comply with the state requirement. I would like to just say one item in this that I find discomforting and I don't know why I didn't pick up on it before, but I didn't. And that is on page eight. There's an annual housing permit data by the DECD 
it's just really hard to put forward a whole plan that's got five-year-old data. It's missing information after 2017. And I know it's probably, they were, it was a quick pull. And I know because of COVID, it probably hasn't been updated, but it's just, I think really hard as a town. Um, and that is the only caveat I would add. To having, I, don't, I don't agree with having old data in a plan that was submitted to the day to the town, to the state. Uh, I'd like to hear from the rest of the board. Uh, would Who would like to go first? Adam, you have your hand up? No, I don't, but uh, I oh. I have no proper plan. I'm- It was I'm, the person, my apologies, it looked like a hand was up. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Bob DiPietro, do you have a, a comment? To tell you the truth, I didn't study it. Okay, that's fair. Mike Aramita, do you have a comment? A uh, question on the median income. What year is that from? Is that? What page you on? Uh, page six. Thank you. I, I didn't. I didn't generate the report. You know, this was our. You know, this was. Um, this was <laughs> Nick, so our <clears throat> MPP student from UConn, with the assistance of um, Patrice and. Mike D'Amato, and they they addressed all of your questions and concerns from the last meeting yeah. in this draft. Okay, it looked uh, like I'm sorry, it looked like the data from the 2020 census. Okay, that's that's I, was uh, thinking, I, mean, I, I use I, that stuff a lot. It, that that appears to be the the base. And I think that. and I think the housing data that you're talking about comes from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And I think that is the latest data that's available from them. Okay. Are there any other questions that can we can try and answer on the board? Hearing none, I would ask for a motion then to accept the affordable housing plan so it can be forwarded to the state. Do I have a motion? I'll so move with the statement that I give give them back their report. And they can shelve it with all yeah, the no, other sure. reports that they have. In, I didn't say shelve it. I said shelve it. Shelve it. S H E L E it. Thank you. I second the motion, but not the sentiment. <laughs> it's late. Wait, I'm sorry. Wow. Yep. Thank you for your um, laughter. Uh, uh, are there any other comments now that we have a, a motion before us and seconded? Any other comments? <laughs> I'll ask for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. DiPietro? Abstain. Abstained. Uh, do you want us to come back to you? And no. You're abstaining. No. For Thank you very much. And I'm voting in favor. So we have four yeses and one abstention. Mr. DiPietro. Thank you. Moving on to business B, consider an act on a uh, give back amount to the Board of Finance. Uh, Mr. Rupert, would you like to make a comment? So you should have all received this in a supplemental package this afternoon, but these are items that were identified by, um, by myself and our uh, CFO of monies that will be unexpended in this fiscal year. And we would like you to consider uh, potentially these as additional give backs uh, to seed our budget for next year. Um, those items are 2000 in firefighter retention employee benefits, 5000 in unemployment compensation, 2000 in mileage, $1,000 in planning and zoning other payroll, uh, 890 in dues and fees for planning and zoning, uh, uh, $287 left on the probate from the <clears throat> probate contract, um, economic development uh, budget on expense of 1570 other payroll of the highway department, 300 and $27,000 from salt and sand in the highway department, the, uh, we, we are full with salt and sand, and by golly, I hope we don't need any more this year. Jim, so just to note, I did not get that supplemental packet for some reason. I, I've been searching for it and I haven't gotten it, but that's fine. I, I 
heard what you just read. But, Is there any clarification you need, Adam? No. Uh, Peter, What's think? the total though? What's 40, the total of? $40,047. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Mr. Armida? Motion that we approve it. Do I have a second? Yes. Mr. Moore, second. a second to Mr. Moore, do you have any comments? No, nope. I think the, uh, um, I appreciate Jim's work in, in going back and yep. scraping up what we can give back and hopefully that'll help with, this, with the budget process. Uh, Jim and I did review all this and uh, in an effort to make sure that nothing was gonna fall apart. <laughs> we didn't spend the money. <laughs> uh, and I thank him for his effort also. So at this point, I would ask for uh, a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, we'll go on to the first selectman's report on COVID. Uh, we were uh, spoke to uh, the health district this week. Uh, we have good news to report, and that is our part of the state. Our town is in the green. You've heard that other parts of and that is to the CDC, which disagrees with the way the state looks at it, but um, uh, that's not the first time. Not, uh, not my part of, of the town. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's an exception to <laughs> every rule, and uh, we have a flag here that says that we have a, um, a well represented by um, someone who we weren't going to bring up your cough. But we hope you're feeling better. Uh, let's see what I have to, what else you have to say about that. Blah, 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 blah. So they just re, um, the state is not talking about doing anything differently. Uh, Talon, Talon County is in the green. Uh, the hospitalization rate and the uh, and the cases are the most vulnerable. They are finding, and the individuals who are uh, vulnerable. Um, I wrote that twice for some reason. When it goes to it, he predicts that we may move to yellow in the next few weeks. So, Adam, you don't fall in this particular census. You may fall in the next one. Uh, they are promoting still vaccine, personal education uh, for hygiene to keep people safe and to stay at home if you're sick, Adam. That's what they're reporting. Hmm. Thank you very much. We're going to move on because of the late hour. Uh, and at this point, I go for the uh, administrator's report. Your monthly report, sir? Oh, sure. Now I gotta find it. Then why don't you work on that? We're gonna come my, back to that. My Let's yeah, I found oh, it right, for me. Good. Okay. So um, we've got the low SIP grant uh, that has been submitted to uh, Capital Region Council of Governments who's working on, on behalf of the DOT, we continue to work on the connectivity trail project. Uh, we held a public hearing on the 26th. We had a special town meeting to move funds for the school projects. We've had the affordable housing plan presentation. Um, we had a trails committee meeting. Uh, we facilitated some repairs to a bridge, bridge in Fraser Park. We've begun union negotiations. We completed the wrap up with UConn students on the waterline project. And unfortunately, the day they did an actual presentation at UConn at Oak Hall. Unfortunately, I was ill that day. Uh, so Patrice went on my behalf and said it, it was uh, extraordinary. And we do have that uh, in electronic format. So we can share that with the Board of Selectmen at some point in the future. I attended the CROG Policy Board meeting. Um, I attended the Board of Directors meeting of Eastern Highlands Health District as a member of the board of directors, also attended CTCMA. We've completed the EMPG grant award for the 22-23 um, fiscal year. We renewed the LAP policy. Uh, we've continued negotiations on the trash removal contract and I have another meeting with them later on in the week. We're continuing to work on all the things in the budget process invitations for the Korean War veterans event, which I believe is on the 13th of this month. So those have been sent out, uh, continued work on the technology plan. And we've actually placed a computer order to replace the oldest computers that we have. 
We've hosted in, in-house for the crewman three position, which is uh, the position that Bruce Munson is, is uh, retiring from. We've been meeting with the highway department staff regularly uh, to ensure continuity of operations during their staff absences uh, with both uh, Mr. Dimmick and Mr. Munson out. I've had the opportunity to meet with our new evening trooper, uh, Trooper Jake Messier. Hopefully everyone will get to meet him under favorable circumstances. I've collaborated with our director of health, Rob Miller, regarding late communications for algae blooms, and we've disseminated a draft policy with the help of Kim Welsh. Um, we had another CONDOT meeting regarding 384 and 44 interchange. Um, and the, the COVID information that uh, our first selectman shared with you is hot off the press. We did hold a unified command meeting this last Monday. And the annual report is completed earlier than I think it's ever been done before. It's published and available, which is uh, exciting. Is there any questions? I would ask when that. Do you, when do you sleep? <laughs> when, do you, when do you sleep is the, is the question. Rarely, Bob. <laughs> uh, I would ask the board because of the late hour, if you have other questions uh, other than that great one, uh, please call him. Uh, he is available during the week. Thank you very much. Thank you for that report. Uh, low SIP grant and activity grant, sir. I really just kind of covered those in uh, the the, uh, the, re the monthly report. And under other, I have two items. Uh, one, I would ask you to ask, add to the agenda for uh, assistant building official appointments. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Heckman will be going out in the middle of the month for some medical treatment and we're gonna need some help. I have uh, two gentlemen who are retired and are available and willing to assist us with our needs. Uh, their names are Carlton Smith. He's retired from the city of Groton as their chief building official. The other is Joseph Callahan, who was recently retired from uh, Coventry as their uh, building official. Do you need uh, an action on this, sir? I do. I have to call back our, one of our selectmen. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Mike, we need to make a motion. I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you stepped aside. <laughs> you want to make a motion? So uh, we need a motion to, to um, appoint two gentlemen that Mr. Rupert mentioned. Could you read their names again? Uh, Carlton Smith and Joseph Callahan. Thank you. <laughs> To assistance, what, what, assistance, assistant acting, building. acting assistant building inspector, right? Inspectors. Yes. Thank you. And I need a second. Ms. Aramita seconds. Is there any comment? Adam? No. Bob Petro? You're on mute, sir. He said no. Muted. Okay, very good. Then at this time, I will ask for a vote. All in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Very good. We have a unanimous vote. Is there anything else? The, the other item, the, this is something we normally ask uh, selectmen to act on, is we have a, uh, a request from our registrars. Normally, when our staff uh, go to meetings, they've been paid at the statutory rate of $35. Uh, when they go where? When they when they go to, to meetings that training, they're to training. training meetings that Thank they're you. required to go to, mm -hmm. uh, normally the statutory rate is thirty five dollars for the day, um, and our our registrars have put in their budget uh, for them to be paid at their normal hourly rate, and that is something that uh, I like for the board of selectmen to discuss. The request is there for them to be paid at that rate already uh, from uh, the registrars <laughs> and. Uh, they have put it in their budget, the money is there, but since it's a change from what we have done historically in the past, I think it's appropriate that the Board of Selectmen act on it. So my understanding is it was in last year, it was in last year's budget that it was approved in last year's budget with a descriptive. I have not seen it, my apologies, just because of the busy week. I came to my, I have not seen that, uh, but other town employees uh, who go out on 
meetings, uh, go to meetings and for training are paid at their hourly rate is my understanding. So at this point, I would ask for a motion that we, because it's in the, in the, in the existing budget and it's been planned for, uh, that we pay them at their hourly rate. Uh, do I have a motion? Yes. Mr. Aramina makes the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I just have with a question. Yes. Uh, you've absolutely, we can go yeah. right around that. Okay. Questions. The question is, is this for the remaining of this fiscal year? Is that what we're voting on? Or is this for? No, it is going backwards it, to it, the meetings in which they have already attended and have not been paid. Yeah, but we're talking about, yeah, paying out of this year's budget. Yes. Out of the, out That's of all this that affects. So, yes. Okay. Unless you uh, you want to do it as a matter of policy, I would think it should be a matter of policy. I, I believe that, that you should go to the meeting. That's what I'm saying. Today. I wonder if we should. I'll take that as a second motion after. Uh, we have a motion before us. Uh, Adam, do you have a question? No. Peter, do you have a question? Okay, very good. Then I will take uh, ask for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. And now I'll take a second motion, Mr. Moore. Well, I think they, they should be compensated equal to our other employees. So bringing this forward, I would- As policy? As a yeah. policy. That should be paid at their hourly rate. Right, yeah. And is, do I have a second? We'll say one, sir. M Ms. Aramita, thank you. Uh, the, are there any, comment, any questions or comments from anyone? Then I will ask for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And, uh, I see no objection, so it passes unanimously. Very good. Uh, may I add one? We have two items to um, to tackle here that is not on the agenda. So I'd ask for a motion to open the agenda uh, to include, we have to set another meeting date because of what failed this evening as number one. Uh, and, oh, and I would wanted to share um, the invitation to the Korean Veterans Recognition on May 13th. Do I have a motion to open the agenda? I'll and, make the motion. Ms. Daramita, thank you. And I'll second that to add the, two items. the item. The two items. The two items as, as presented by the first selection. <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 So we'll tackle the first one. Uh, no, <coughs> first. Uh, on May 13th at 3 p.m. at the Senior Center, we have, uh, uh, we'll be coming to town, our Lieutenant Governor of the State of Connecticut in, to, and the Commissioner of Veterans Affairs to recognize Bolton's Korean War time veterans. We have reached out to those that we have been able, we sent letters out. Those that we haven't heard from, we've reached out. I made personal phone calls to them. And at the present time, we still, uh, we've had, we have uh, some members that are not well enough to come, but we will recognize them. And then we will have others that will be there present and with their families. So I'd ask the selectmen if they would like to come, we are please invited May 13th Senior Center, 3 p.m. We'd love to have uh, a great showing from our board. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the second, I think there's going to be refreshments. Uh, <laughs> they always get people with food. So the, and the second thing is what we heard this evening and the witness was the, the failing of the item number three, the, uh, the motion. And so we need to set forward uh, another meeting to address that. And I... I do have one question, Jim, to you. Um, do we need to have a motion? Do we, because this is dual with the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education, do we have to have a dual meeting? What we're doing is playing with one item on the I'm trying to make sure we cross our T's and dot our I's very carefully here. Well, I don't think you do because it, it ultimately the board of when when the recommendation comes back from the capital committee, the board of selectmen is the has one that the has power to, to modify. Yes. So uh, without 
it going back to anything. So do we have to go to the CAPA committee? No, no, it, it's now it, that's what we presented forward. We, we actually accepted it. So anything you're doing, you can tell them we're reviewing that item, but it is the board, the board of selectmen has the right to modify that. So I think, I think we have to do two things. Yes. The thing is that the board of selectmen has to have a special meeting to discuss this item yes, sir. and thoroughly vet whatever their next move is. And then we have to have another, um, another town meeting, town meeting to, yep. to vote. To vote. And what, are you, what is your time frame? Do you see Mr. Hubert? We can't have the special meeting fast enough. Thank you. So, so we really need to, that, that is an item that we need to do very quickly because we have time constraints with the call uh, for the public hearing or the town meeting. It's not a public hearing, it'll be a town meeting on that agenda item. So and, we have an, and we have a vote at the end of the month. We have an issue that the two-party system is taken up with this week and next week for their conventions in the days and evenings, depending on which one you get assigned to. Uh, let me... When's, when's the uh... Adam? Can you look at your calendar and see what dates you're free next week? The only day I have any real time. Oh boy, wait a minute. <laughs> Was well, this week kind of blew holes in my schedule, but um, of course, the tenth. I have time in the morning. The eleventh, I also have time in the morning. Do do I have a consensus on the morning? Eleventh. Did you say tenth? You like the eleventh? I'm not here. Oh, the tenth is when you're not here. Do I have a? What consensus? about the twelfth? Oh boy. You like? I, I can be available either one of those days. <laughs> Uh, the tenth or the twelfth? Not available on the twelfth. I have a a board meeting. Yeah, the eleventh. I won't be available in the morning. I mean, the twelfth. I won't be available in the morning. I don't think. So we, what, what, like, what about the ninth in the afternoon? I'm gone. As long as it's not too late. Morris, I'm, I'm not I'm, available. I'm gone. Uh, oh, you're gone. Tuesday. I'm I'm sorry, but you know I'm locked into that. We're back but, to but that the eleventh is doable anytime, morning, day, night. You know. Looking at the 11th, I'm going to go back to that one. Uh, can you check your calendars? I could do the. I could do the 11th. I'm pretty open on the 11th, as it turns out, because. Day or I, evening. Uh. Yeah, I guess I could do the evening on the 11th. <clears throat> that convention, I'm not attending. <laughs> <laughs> Is that work? Uh, I don't think I can do the evening. You can do the daytime. The daytime I can do. I can't do the. Okay. It's it's. I'm not. I I I would prefer an evening, but I understand that we are. This is a pressure situation, so I would like to propose that we meet on the morning of the 11th at 9:30 in the morning to give us time to prepare for a special meeting of the board of selectmen to address. <coughs> the issue of the five-year capital improvement plan as presented by the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education in the annual document. Okay, so we don't need a motion. Uh, so okay. we'll nine. Nine very, very good. As a hybrid meeting. Uh, yes, uh, um, hybrid meeting still, Adam, okay? Yeah, that's fine. I might be able to attend in person. I don't know. Well, we hope you'll be feeling better. <laughs> but for Bob DePietro, I, I, I would like it to be a hybrid meeting, please. Yep. And we'll, yep. we'll get you all the data. Okay. Uh, so that, I'm sorry, Bob. Um, who's going to do the research to prepare for the uh, options that were presented by all those people 
change tonight there's a lot to prepare we've actually, we've actually done a lot of the research bob i'm going to ask the administration to please uh prepare for that meeting and bring forward items on uh, and responses on paper as well as give an oral report where they can add more or they could do it as a PowerPoint, whichever they prefer. Very good. Yeah, yeah we're just- we, we have to vote on this? No, we do not. It's just a, to a call for a meeting. Okay. Oh, do we? No. 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 Special meeting. They call a special meeting. We've just done it. Those are the two things you got to, did you have to grab everything? Very good. Then at this time, uh, for I would ask uh, and some visitors to please excuse us because we're going to enter into number 10, the executive session to discuss the strategy for union negotiations. Adam, would you like to make a motion? Sure, uh, I move that we go into executive session to discuss <clears throat> strategy for collective bargaining negotiations with the, which union, Jim? Well, the the, uh, the non-supervisors union is the group that we've met with so far. Okay, so the, with the non-supervisors union and that we invite the town administrator to attend. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. Aye. You're in executive session. Thank you, Adam. Adjourn. <laughs> I'll second it. to adjourn. <laughs> I have a motion and I have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.